We're back with a bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So, Dick, I have some Marcia, questions for you. Really? What? Because you know, it's surprisingly we haven't covered in our back office chats. It's impossible. We never get off politics. I know, but we always talk about it. So <laughs> here's do, the thing. Yeah. What ignited your passion, your interest in politics? All right. I grew up in a very big family. It was the ninth of ten. We had the fight, ninth of the ten. ninth of ten. Fun fact. We had fights in my family constantly about politics. When I was very little, it was the end of the Vietnam War. Then it became Watergate, and it was always between. Did you ever win any of these arguments? I never won because I had three older brothers and, <laughs> and four older sisters. So how the hell are we going to win anything? Um, now they say I just talk too much in general. But it's good when I'm on your show. Now the bottom line is, is it was that was the thing that we used to laugh. Never mind. I, can't. I love you. Yeah. Thank so you. here's the thing: Do you have a favorite politician that you've ever covered? I think you and me have talked about this before. It's hard not to say Ed Koch. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, for all the reasons in the world. And remember, for me, Ed Koch, I, I wasn't, obviously wasn't at the, at the beginning, and neither were you in 77. But not only after he got out of office, but for many years, we would go to his office on 6th Avenue and do interviews with him. And there was always extraordinary brilliance in his mind. He and was really a smart he man. He really was. And, and, and uh, cared about it. Cared about it and cared about everything to the end. 12 years in office, went through so much in his life. A pretty extraordinary man. Do you have any least favorite politicians? I do. I've got a list of very long, but you know what I think uh, Erica is saying now? We're running out of time. I always listen to Erica, you know? <laughs> Erica is the producer she's of the show. The best. And she's going, I can't believe Marsha asked that question. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. She knows I'm really going to So um, if you had to, a chance to have dinner with any politician, any political figure, alive or, or dead, who would it be? Uh, you know, this is going to sound like a weird one, but uh, Fiorella LaGuardia, he had such a fascinating life. He, he came from nothing, and he, he was in a period which is so fascinating in New York City. The other one, of course, is Lyndon Johnson, because there's another guy. I, you know, I read all the Caro books, and, and you know, the Johnson, he's he was a fascinating. Arguably, arguably the most fascinating American politician. And he had century. a lot of really interesting achievements over the course of his presidency. I mean, to pass the Civil Rights Act when I mean, he's coming from Texas. I you mean, know? that's pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing. And, and also, you know, he loved the bully tactics, too. So if you went out to dinner with one of these people, Fiorello LaGuardia or Lyndon Johnson, what would be on the menu? Well, if it was LaGuardia and Johnson, for sure it's going to be pizza because uh, it, I, I'll tell you, um, my favorites, uh, I'll, I'm going to start, Senna Pizza, not Center Pizza, Senna Pizza in Queens, okay, and um, I'm going a little out of the boroughs, but not far, Mount Vernon, Johnny's Pizza, which is And arguably would it be the best. plain? Would it be what kind oh, of Always plain. I can't stand, you know, they, they bring in the pizza here every once in a while, and they put the anchovies. You know the kids. I, I don't need salad pizza. I eat pizza pizza. You don't eat salad pizza? That's not pizza. Oh, my God. Do you believe we got to this, Marshall? <laughs> we never get to this level. What are we doing? Okay, well, when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, man. I wanted to be not annoying, and I never achieved it. I was just, uh, no, I, I don't know. I was never like... I kind of like the media and politics, so something there. Um, when I was 12, my sister said, you should, you should run for Congress. I said, could I get out of grammar school first? You know, like, <laughs> okay, we, well, we'll work on that, you know? But no, glad I never chose politics. This is, this is a great medium, it really is. Well, so you get to do politics without having to actually well, run well, in that's politics. That's what they say about people in the media, Marsha. That's what we do. All we do is pick on people. That's what we do. Oh, we don't pick on we people. We just tell the people. truth. Yeah, we, that we try to. We, we do. try to tell the truth. <laughs> you, so you do. I'm curious, what are you reading right now, or what have you read recently? Well, OK, I'm reading right now um, President Kennedy by Richard Reeves, the great um, biographer, who once famously said to me, I said, I once interviewed him and said, what's the most fascinating, what's the most important quality of a president who succeeds? He said, you got to know how to use people and throw them away. And I thought, <laughs> wow, that's one of the best lines I've ever heard. And I'm also listening to The Wager, which is that new book about the shipwreck and that kind of thing. So what do you do to relax? I don't. Oh, yes, you do. No, no, I really, well, I, I, you know, I like, to, I, I like to run. I like to work out. Da, da, da. My wife just wants to get me out of the house. That's, that's, so, and she can relax. So where do you do your best thinking? Uh, probably in the car, you know, in the car. But, but <laughs> I don't think enough. That's the problem, you know, because I'm always listening to something, a podcast or something. You know, it's actually when I was commuting regularly, that would be when I would do my best thinking as well. As I was driving, you, people are going to go, oh, my God, did you ever get in an accident? No. But it, it, you're, you're focused and you're thinking about things and you may listen to something on the radio. You may hear something on a podcast. You start thinking. Uh, you think the, you, you daydream a lot, which is not good because then you're not focusing on the present like that woman said at the very beginning of the show. Focus on the present. Good luck with that. So um, what are your favorite places in New York? Oh, well, my favorite place in New York is 
Fordham University of the Bronx. Oh Bronx. my God! Yes, no, it's oh, true. A commercial. And, no, no, this is and it, it, my wife. We both went to Fordham. She likes to say it's our happy place. And the Bronx Botanical Garden, which is the most beautiful place in all New York. Stop. Not the Bronx Zoo. Oh, the Bronx Zoo's next door. When I was little, yeah, I used to take the kids on the class trips to the Bronx Zoo. Always go to the this go always go to the seals and they like the giraffes too and the polar bears. That's big hits with kids. Love the seals. I could do a tour of the Bronx Zoo for any I always wonder why they don't have flamingos, but that's just another discussion. That's another no, you just get them out on the lawn. The you know the. So my last question is is there a place in New York that you would recommend to an out of towner coming here for the first time? There is a spot and it's a visual and it's in Brooklyn. And it's right over the bridge and right beneath the bridge. And you have this look of the city. And it is absolutely breathtaking. And every time I get there, it, it, listen, I look at the Manhattan skyline and it always makes my jaw drop. It just does. It's corny, but it's true. Whatever it is, and to see now the Great Freedom Tower there to replace the World Trade Center, and to see the beautiful buildings going up. Everybody says, we don't need more towers. I disagree. The, the, the city is a constant, vibrant thing. We're still going to see the Empire State Building. You know, it's really interesting. When I was working at City Hall for the New York Daily News, I used to run across the Brooklyn Bridge um, uh, three times a week wow. early in the morning. And when I would go across the bridge and then I would run back, and I agree with you that when you're at on the Brooklyn side of the bridge and you're looking at the skyline, it is right of um, unbelievable. It is. And then the other great thing that's happening in this city, and I might I would tell a tourist and you tell people out of town, go to all of these new observation decks. They're expensive, but they're all fantastic. They really are. Whether it's the one at One World Trade or I, I've been I've been to the edge. I haven't been to the new one above Thirty Rock, but are you uh, going to go on the beam? <laughs> I'm going to, I, the beam, how far do you got to drop? You know it can't be, you know, it's probably like 15 feet, right? No, it's, it's big. It's, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not yeah. 2,000 feet. By the way, do you know that picture was staged? No. I, yes, it, the picture was staged, and it was above the RCA building. Everybody thought it was the Empire State Building, but it, it was the RCA building, and it was staged. So you're going to go on the beam? You're not going to go? I'll, I'll take the beam, Marcia. Not if me. You, if you not come me. with me. Not me. No, no way. Not doing it. Not, do, not going to do it. I mean, it. unless they give me like seven seat belts. Seven seat, <laughs> they have one. The one should be enough. I, seven. And they probably have cushions underneath. You've got to figure that out. Dick, I really am so happy you joined me. Yes. Thank you for being here, and thank you at home for being with us as well.